Just like the Mate 60 series, the Huawei P70 series China version was quietly announced today without any launch event. We used to learn that the P series stood for photography, but this time around, the P series has been given a new name, Pura, which means purer and simpler design. It means that the brand new series is not only the pinnacle of Huawei's photography, but also a stylish work of art created by Huawei. Luckily, we bought one and got our hands on this Pura 70 Ultra on the first day of the release. Without further ado, let's start with unboxing. Because it's the Ultra version, the box is a bit bigger than the other three versions. Opening the lid, the top layer is the phone itself. There's only a brown variant left in the store, but we are pretty happy to get a special color. It really feels quite different from the other Huawei phones we've ever used. Now just leave it alone, we will talk about the phone later. Let's see what other accessories are in this big box first. On the right, there's a stylish phone case, which fits well with the brown model. I have to say that the design of this phone case is quite beautiful. It does look like a work of art. Underneath the case is a car pin, manual, and warranty card. There's also a charging cable, which is quite ordinary, but this 100 watt charger is rather special. Although it is designed as a blend to support the two interfaces, there's no way you can plug both in at the same time, as they are so close together. For charging, the Pura 70 Ultra supports 100 watt wider charging and 80 watt wireless charging as well. The battery capacity also got upgraded with a larger capacity of 5,200 million. The Pura 70 series comes in a multiple variants. Apart from the Ultra in my hand, there's also Pura 70 Standard, Pura 70 Pro, and Pro Plus. That's truly ambitious as they've almost covered all the price levels of flagships and premium phones. The Pura 70 Ultra China version has a starting price of a 9999 RMB this time around, which is about $1,400. Even so, Huawei's online store sold out in one minute, a testament to Huawei's dominance in China. The Ultra version comes in four colorways, and I picked a color that wasn't available in the previous P series, and I think it's the best looking of the four. It still has the same leather-like back cover, but with some more starburst patterns. The most unusual feature is the design of the camera module, which is really stylish and edgy. At least it's no longer a circle or a round island like other brands' camera phones. If you hang out with the Pura 70 Ultra, everyone will be able to get that you bought a new phone from Huawei. That should be the main reason why this camera module is designed like this. Another reason is that this main camera is so big and awesome that it had to be arranged like this. So how awesome is the Pura 70 Ultra's main camera? 1-inch sensor, RYYB, f1.6 aperture, sensor shift stabilization, and this, retractable lens. The best technology ever used on any camera except for variable aperture. Wait, the Ultra also features a variable aperture. So the Ultra is probably a collection of Huawei's most advanced image technologies, and it might even be some kind of a showing off. It's important to note that the retractable lens is just to make the lens less protruding and also to improve the optical quality. But it is not an optical zoom function. Perhaps in the future, when this retractable lens technology becomes more reliable, physical zoom lenses for cell phones can make a comeback. Here, we quickly shot some photos with the Ultra. The three rear cameras are really amazing that they all feature quick and accurate focus. And the images here were just great. I don't even have to think about which lens has the better image quality while shooting. All I need is to find the right zooming to complete the composition, and the photos always surprisingly have decent dynamic range and better color reproduction. Most likely thanks to Huawei's powerful image AI algorithms. Even at 10x zoom, it doesn't feel like it's a result of a 3.5x lens crop at all. But we do have a complaint so far, the lenses are not yet capable of smooth continuous zooming and interruptions when switching between lenses might detract from the experience. Last year's Mate 60 series was powered by the Kirin 9000S processor, which was Huawei's first Chinese processor released after US ban. It wasn't that great as it could have been, but it did mean that Huawei was able to make as many phones as it wanted. That's why the Pura 70 Ultra is using a new Kirin chipset this time, the Kirin 9010. 
It's actually the same architecture and GPU as a 9000S, just with a tweaked frequency for each core. But right now, we're not yet sure that if this process has been upgraded. The CPU score for the 9010 will be a little bit higher than 9000S, so the 9010, like its name, is just a slightly upgraded version of the 9000S. After all, it's only been a year and it's going to take a lot longer for the Kirin chipset to catch up with the world's best. The Pura 70 Ultra's screen doesn't look too different from the Mate 60 Pros. Both have FHD+, 120Hz OLED panels, and both also support LTPO, high frequency VWAM dimming at 1440Hz and a touch sampling rate of 300Hz. The only difference is that the Pura 70 Ultra's uses the latest black Totora's Quinlan glass, which is 100% more drop resistance than the first generation Quinlan glass. The fingerprint recognition is also, unsurprisingly, in the same position as the Mate 60 Pro, and for the big phone like this, I'd have to prefer to move the fingerprint recognition up a bit. There's also some key information that we will briefly go over. The satellite calling are still here, and they will only be available within China. Even though the main camera is a retractable lens, the phone is nonetheless IP68 certified waterproof. There's an NFC and IR transmitter, and it can hold two SIM cards. USB is 3.1 Gen 1, and it supports DP1.2 video output. The weight is 229 grams, which is about as heavy as other Ultra phones. Powered by Harmony OS 4.2, it still doesn't work with the GMS, but it's still very smooth and responsive with animations in multitasking. For the benchmark results, the new Kirin 9010 on the Pura shows very little difference in a single core performance compared to 9000S, while the multi-core performance is about 6% better. As for graphics performance, both chips use the same Marlon 910 GPU, and the benchmarks prove it. So this Kirin 9010 is basically a modified version of the 9000S, which is why the chip isn't named the 9100. In terms of power consumption, we tested this chipset in the Genshin Impact and it consumed less power than the 9000S. And surprisingly, it even outperforms most of flagship phones of the year 2024. As for what magic was used for such power consumption performance, further testing is needed. So that's all there is to the Huawei Pura 70 Ultra. Huawei has become more and more comfortable after their second year of resuming phone production. They've been able to guarantee at least one flagship phone release a year. Other than the performance, which does have room for improvements, they have been able to reach the top of the line. So let's see whether the Pura 70 series will be released globally, well I really hope so. Thanks for watching, we will do a deeper review or comparison with the Pura 70 Ultra. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon.